Good morning ladies and gentlemen, David here and today I am here to give you my 10 tips for beginners after playing more or less 60 hours of Shin Megami Tensei 5. So I played a lot of SMT games in my life, old games, new games, and of course I beat SMT5 as well. Review is up on the channel if you're interested in checking this out as well. But I figured there's a lot of new people that are gonna jump into SMT5 as their first mainline Megami Tensei game and for that you need some tips because the game's pretty hard the game is rough uh, it is on a similar level as smt4 so you will need some beginner tips and i'm here to give you guys some tips now you guys did it for nocturne my veterans that are subscribed to the channel watching all the videos i appreciate you all shout outs but if you have some tips for our newcomers listening to this video feel free to drop a comment down in the comment sections below with your own tips that are not on my list that way the newcomers will have my 10 tips and will also have your tips in the comment sections below if you enjoyed the video quick thumbs up really helps and if you're new you want more content on anything smt shin Megami tensei persona atlas and more you're at the right place consider subscribing but now let's get into my tips for this video and my first tip is in regards to the Magatsuhi skills now in the game you have a Magatsuhi meter on the top right corner of your screen and when the Magatsuhi meter is full you can perform a Magatsuhi skills but this is not what this is all about the first tip is in regards to the enemy so the enemies will also gather Magatsuhi during battles and when they gather Magatsuhi it means they're about to do a more powerful move in the next turn and certain monsters, certain demons in the game, certain bosses have some extremely devastating moves, Makatsuhi moves as well. And there's a boss that you will fight early in the game, Nuwa, which was showed in the news report. I think it was uh, volume three. I'm not too sure, but it was revealed in a trailer. So this is not spoiler, but you're seeing it on screen right now. And Nuwa is a hard boss fight if you don't know how to manage her magatsuhi skills she is doing a certain spell which destroys your whole party kills all your stats it is an extremely rough move that she's doing the turn after gathering some magatsuhi but if you know my first tip if you watch this video if you're a good person <laughs> you have to guard so yes when you see a certain enemy gathering some magatsuhi it may be a good idea to guard and it is this the case for nuwa if you don't guard for that fight it's a freaking hard fight and if you do guard it's an easy fight now that being said this is a tip for this fight in particular and others in the game which i don't want to spoil this is not a strategy that will work for all the bosses it's just an important one that you need to know if you don't want to feel extremely bad when fighting one of the earlier bosses being nuwa my second tip is actually to focus on finding Mimans. So Mimans are small little creatures gathered around the nether world in Shin Megami Tensei 5. They're red little demons and when you find them, they give you glory points. And with glory points, you can perform hypothesis in the world of shadow, which allows you to gain a lot of different things with your Nahobino, which allows you to customize your Nahobino. For example, you can use some glory points to increase the number of skill slots that you have for your Nahobino, the number of demons that you can carry around with you as well. So it is extremely useful. Don't sleep on Mimans in Shin Megami Tensei 5. Make sure to look in every nook and cranny of the map to find the Mimans because they're going to be a big help for you. A lot of Mimans are very well hidden and maybe a little bit hard to find. Which brings me to my third point for this video. You should focus on finding Siren Ups. In the game so siren ups is a new demon that was introduced in smt4 apocalypse and in smt5 you can still recruit them you can fight this demon but there's also certain ones that are hidden throughout the map and when you find them they will ask for a certain amount of maka expensive big amounts of maka but if you pay them they actually reveal the locations of all the mimins in the area which is extremely OP. So my my the way that I was playing the game is when I reached a new area, I would look for the Siren Ups and when I found them, pay the demon and then I'd try to get all the Mimins. And at like 50 hours in the game, I had all the Mimins. So my Nahobino was really powerful at that point. Two extremely important tips for SMT5. Now my fifth tip is a tip that is worthy and that works and that will help you for anything SMT, not just SMT5. And it is a simple one, fuse a lot of demons. SMT is well known for its ability to fuse and recruit demons. So when you recruit certain demons, you can go in the world of shadows and fuse those demons together to create some new and more powerful demons. 
Don't be scared of using demons. Once your demons have unlocked all their skills, you can keep them if you have a very powerful demon, but most of the time, it's a better idea to fuse them and create an even more powerful demon that you can then level up and gain some even more important and powerful skills. So fuse a lot of demon and don't be scared of fusing a bunch of demon for a specific fight. So sometimes you'll get it at a boss fight, first try, he's destroying you. It happens all the time, it happened to me and I'm a vet for the series. So don't be scared, you fight the boss, you get wrecked, you notice his weaknesses, you notice what he hits and what you can hit on him to exploit the weakness and you just go back to the world of shadows, you fuse three or four demons and then you just go back and get things rolling and destroy that boss. My sixth tip is an extremely important and it's in regards to essence fusion. Now if you watched my review, if you listened to my review, you know that a new mechanic in SMT5 that I completely adore is essence fusion. Essence, essence fusion is simple. When you play the game, when you beat certain demons, when you recruit other demons, when you complete a subquest, you gain De demon essence. For every single one of the demons, there is an essence that you can get. And what that essence contains is simple. It contains the skills of the demon and the affinities of that demon. So if you have a Jack Frost essence, well, you have the skills of the Jack Frost in the essence and also his affinities. Affinities being his weaknesses, resistance, block, etc. So my tip is exploit that system. When you fight a certain boss, you notice that the boss is weak to ice. You don't have any spells. Get the King Frost Essence, fuse with your Nahobino the Essence, and gain the King Frost spells, the Bufu spells, the Bufu Dine, and then you can exploit the enemy because you know his weakness and you put the right spells on your Nahobino. But that works for Nahobino, but it also works for the other demons. That's right, you can fuse your demons with the essence of another demon, meaning that your Nahobino and all your demons are extremely customizable. So I suggest taking advantage of the essence fusion mechanic. Do it before a boss fight, do it after the first try, and you will succeed. The game won't be that hard to you. My seventh tip is a very easy tip and a simple one at that. It's to do the subquest. For my whole playthrough, I'm just such a fan of Megaton that I always do all the side content in the games. I do the same thing for most of my favorite series, Yakuza, Judgment, Megaton, Persona, and it's the same thing for SMT5. Not only are the subquests extremely entertaining, but they're also very helpful. The rewards that they give are great. Um, they give a lot of experience, they give good items, they give... So sometimes the demon that you're helping with the subquest will simply join your team at other times. They will give you their essence, they will unlock a certain demon for fusion. It is extremely important to do the subquest. And again, most of them are not gathering quests that are pretty boring. Most, a lot of subquests have a story inside them, an entertaining story at that. So I fully suggest you do the side quest for your own entertainment and enjoyment of the game, but of course for the rewards as well, which will definitely help you with your playthrough. My eighth tip is a very quick one, but one that is worth bringing up, it is explore the world. Don't be scared of exploring the world, because when you explore the world of Shimigami and say five, you will come across some massive ancient demon statues and you can see a little horror around them and those statues when you activate them they give you insane amounts of XP. It's a one-time use and they, they will level up all your demons all at once. They're rare, there are not a lot of them in the game. I'm sure by the time this video is up, you can probably find the location of all of them on YouTube. Be, be aware of spoilers if you go and look for that video. Same thing for my tip, my third tip on the finding the cyber cops. I'm sure you can find all of that on YouTube by the time this video drops, but be careful of spoilers. So try to find those statues, they will help and they will give you insane amount of experience. My ninth tip is a classic. Again, works for all the Mega Mutansi games. It's not a great tip for all the RPGs because it doesn't work in all the RPGs, but in Megaton it always works and that is buffs and debuffs. Don't sleep on buffs and debuffs. It is extremely important. If you don't use them, a certain fight may be extremely hard and if you just use them buffs and debuffs, it would be easy. What that means is you raise your defense level on all your party members, raise your attack, raise your accuracy, lower the attack of the enemy, lower the defense of the enemy and the accuracy. If you have maximum defense and the enemy has minimum attack, he may hit like a 50 on your main character. While if you not, don't have any buff on you and the enemy is not the buff, he's maybe hit like a 150. It's, it's really that intense. So don't sleep on buffs and debuffs. Attacks are great, 
but buffs and debuffs are crazy, so make sure to focus on buffs and debuffs. My final tip for this video is a very simple one as well. The biggest difficulty spike in Shin Megami Tensei 5 is the end game. So there's no extremely hard spike like in previous games, there, there's no Matador and there's no uh, Minotaur from 4 and 3. So the spike is at the end, so you may have a decent time and you may do decent for most of your playthrough, but once you're at, you hit the 50 hour mark, you're probably gonna get wrecked. My tip is to be sure to grind out the demons that you need for a specific battle. So you know how I mentioned fusing demons, so once you start, you try a certain boss at the end game, he's destroying you. Take note of his weaknesses, fuse the demon that you need, and grind him a few level, give him some grimoires, there's a lot of grimoires that allow you to gain experience in the game that you will find through your playthrough, use your grimoires at the end game, don't be shy, use a lot of essence, do a lot of essence fusion on that particular demon, and honestly, if you do that, even if you're a newcomer to the series, you're gonna destroy those endgame bosses easily. So those are my 10 tips for beginners after playing more or less 60 hours of Shin Megami Tensei 5. I hope those will help you. Don't forget to read the comment sections below as well because I know some of my homies will give you guys some very entertaining and very important tips for SMT5 that will probably help you as well for your playthrough. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Once again, if you enjoyed it, a quick thumbs up helps a ton. And if you're new, please consider subscribing for more on SMT5. See you next time.